Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In our last video, we created a memory match game using Flutter. Today, I'm excited to bring you part two, where we will be updating the game with a multi-level feature and refactoring the code for better readability and maintainability. The user will be able to choose from three different board sizes. 4x4, 6x6, and 8x8. Additionally, the user will be able to pause and continue the game, or even quit back to the main screen to choose a different board size. So, let's dive into bar 2 of our memory match game tutorial. I created a new folder called Utilities. And inside it, I added a new file called icons.dart. Inside the file, I created a list of all the icons that I'll be using in the game. The list is called card icons. These icons will be used on the cards. And by adding them to a list in a separate file, makes it easier to manage and modify them if needed. I created the constants.dart file inside the utilities folder. I updated the file to define some constants that I'll be using throughout the game. The first set of constants are the colors of the continue, restart, and quit buttons. Next, I defined a list of game levels which will be used to display the different board sizes that the user can choose from. The list contains three levels, 4x4, 6x6, and 8x8. Finally, I defined a constant string for the title of the game. Next, I updated the card item dart file inside the models folder to remove the get icon and get color methods. For the icon, I will be using one from the card icons list from the icons.dart file instead. This will simplify our code and make it easier to manage. And instead of setting the color in the get color method, I'll be passing a random color to the card item model. I then updated the game.dart file. The generate icons method is generating a set of icons using the card icons list from the icons.dart file. The get random card icon method is using a do while loop to ensure that only unique icons are added to the set of icons. The generate cards method now creates new card item objects by passing in the generated icon, a random color from the colors primaries list, and a card value. In the onCard breast method, we see that visible card indexes list is now generated using a combination of the asMAP, entries, where, and map methods, which returns a list of indexes of the cards that are currently visible. I updated the code for gamebutton.dart file to introduce a new required parameter, color, which will allow the user to set the background color of the button. The previously defined parameters title and on breast remain required. Additionally, there are also three optional parameters, height, width, and font size. These parameters provide the flexibility to customize the dimensions and font size of the button. If these parameters are not specified, their default values will be used. The build method of the game button widget returns a sized box containing an elevated button. The elevated button is styled using elevatedButton.styleFrom with the provided color, font size, and border radius values. The title and on breast parameters are passed to the elevated button as it child and on breast properties respectively. 
I updated the code in gametimer.dart file to replace the type of the time parameter with duration instead of end. The code will now display the time in the format of hours, minutes, and seconds by calling and formatting the toString method of the duration class. I updated the Dart file memory card to rename the card item to use card to make it more descriptive. I also added a method to handle the card tab and to resize the icon to fit the memory card. I created the Dart file game controls bottom sheet. This is a widget that represents a bottom sheet that appears when the user passes the memory matching game. The bottom sheet displays three buttons, continue, restart, and quit. The continue button resumes the game, the restart button restarts the game, and the quit button takes the user back to the startup page. I then created the file restartgame.dart. The restart game widget receives four required parameters. A boolean is game over, the functions buzz game, restart game, and continue game. The show game controls method is used to show a model bottom sheet with game controls. It first calls the boss game function, then shows the bottom sheet using show model bottom sheet. The game controls bottom sheet widget is used as the content of the bottom sheet. Once the bottom sheet is closed, value is set to the result, which is a boolean indicating whether the user choose to restart the game or continue playing. If value is true, Restart game is called. If it is false, continue game is called. The build method checks if is game over is true. If so, it returns a game button widget with the title try again. If false, it returns another game button widget with the title buzz. Next, I updated the memory match page. The initState function is used to initialize the state of the game by creating a new game object and setting the duration of the timer to zero. The startTimer function is called within initState to start the timer that updates the game duration and cancels it if the game is over. Pause timer is another function that cancels the timer when the game is paused. Reset game resets the game by creating a new game object, canceling the timer and setting the duration to zero. The build method is using a column. The column contains the game timer widget, memory card widget, and the restart game button. I am using a grid view to display a grid of memory cards using the memory card widget. I created the Dart file game options inside the widgets folder. Game options is a stateless widget that returns a column of game button. Each game button widget represents a different game level. Inside the column, there is a map function that iterates over the game levels list defined in constants.dart. For each level in the list, a padding widget with a game button child is returned. When the game button is pressed, the route builder function is called and a new material page route is returned, passing the selected game level to the memory match page widget constructor. I updated the startup page to use the game title constant and the game options widget to create an interactive interface for the user 
to choose the game level and initiate the game. The code is now complete. Run the app and choose a board size to start the game. The 4x4 board is great for beginners, while the 6x6 board provides a bit more challenge. For those of you who are looking for a real challenge, the 8x8 board is sure to keep you on your toes. You will be able to pause and continue the game or even quit back to the main screen to choose a different board size. This feature is especially useful for those of you who may need to take a break in the middle of a game or for those of you who want to switch to a different board size mid-game.